All right, so here is our first problem. I give you an array A of size n and I want you to give me the smallest and the largest number in A. And I want you to do this in the least number of comparisons possible. So your objective is to minimize the number of comparisons. So the basic operation is comparison and you want, I want you to give me the answer in as less comparisons as possible. So here is an example and let's first have a look at what is the simple straightforward solution. So sometimes we call this straightforward solution as the naive solution or the brute force solution which is pretty easy. Essentially I will first find the smallest number then find the largest number independently. And how can I find the smallest number? What I can do is I can start scanning the array from left to right. So let's focus on finding the smallest. So what you do is you, you store a variable, you initialize a variable and call it as the current minimum and you initialize it with the first number. So in the beginning the current minimum is 7. Then you move to the next element and see if I can get a better minimum. So when you move to the next element, you update the current minimum to 3, right? So then you go and have a look at the next element and you see that the current minimum is still 3, still 3. And at this point, you see the current minimum gets updated to 2 and still 2. And this way we can find the smallest number, right? The number of comparisons you need is going to be, is going to be, n minus 1. Similarly, if I want to find the largest number, I can do the same procedure, basically, you know, initialize a, a, a variable called current maximum with the first number, then scan the array from left to right, keep on updating the current max, and at the end you will get the maximum. So what is going to be the total number of comparisons you need for this simple straightforward algorithm? which is t of n is going to be 2n minus 1 and roughly this is 2n, right? So, sorry, 2n minus 2. So we can always assume that the number n is, you know, large enough so that these kind of small things can be ignored and we can mostly focus on the dominating factor. Uh, yes. So now what I'm interested to know is, can I improve this time or can I make it smaller, right? So instead of two, can I get a number smaller than two, like 1.8, 1.5, 1.2? Yes, this is what we now need to achieve. And uh, if you have not seen this question before, or if you don't know the solution yet, uh, please pause the video and try to solve it by yourself. Uh, my advice is don't give up quickly. So try your best and uh, and come back. Okay. Uh, for others, I'm gonna continue the video. So solution. So I'm gonna give a solution where t of n is going to be 1.5 n. So the idea is pretty simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take numbers in pairs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll have a current current min variable as well as a current max variable. The first step I'm, I'm going to do is I'll compare these two numbers and pick the smallest and here the smallest is 3 I will initialize this to the current minimum and the current maximum is 7 ok so that is the first step so in the first step I took two numbers in the next step what I am going to do is I will take the next pair and before I compare those numbers with the current min or current max I will compare between them and I will have a look at what is the smallest number 
and what is the largest number. So I see that 5 is smaller than 9. So one thing I can be sure at this point is 5 can never be the largest number. Right? Similarly, 9 can never be the smallest number in the entire array. Right? So that means, but 5 could still be the smallest and 9 could still be the largest. So what I will do at this point is, I will take this 5 and I will compare with the current minimum. I will compare 5 with the current minimum which is 3 and I will compare 9 with the current maximum and I see that you know 9 is better than 7 so I will update this. Right? Now in the next step I'm going to take the next two numbers. I'll compare between them. I see that 2 is the uh, smallest. So I'll compare 2 with the current minimum only. And I will compare 4 with the current maximum only. So this is my algorithm. Right? So the description of the algorithm or the pseudocode, uh, I'm not going to write, but it is pretty easy. Uh, no. Uh, uh, you can you can try it by yourself. Now the proof of correctness is also pretty straightforward. Uh, we can use mathematical induction to prove it. Uh, I'm not going to write the whole story here, but if you want to if you want to prove it, uh, we can we can say something like this. We can say a claim. We can say a claim. So step one will. Basically, step one will take the first pair, step two will take the second pair, etc. My claim is after after k steps, the current min is the smallest, is the minimum number okay so this is my claim after k steps my current minimum is going to be the smallest number within the first 2k numbers and my current maximum is going to be the largest number within the first 2k numbers so this is my claim and and I need to prove this claim and I can use mathematical induction so you prove the base case which is you know case one right so that means in the first step you are going to have the current minimum here and the current maximum there which is obvious and uh, as an inductive step you assume that this this is correct up to k steps and uh, you show that it is true even for k plus one step and finally after n over k steps you can assume that n is a n is an even number and after n over two steps or after completing all steps the current minimum is going to be the minimum in the entire array and the current maximum is going to be the maximum in the entire array so again you know, as you can see the proof of correctness is uh, is pretty straightforward here and uh, it's easy the last thing i want you to focus is the analysis Right, so analysis, you see, at each step, we are, we are kind of taking care of two numbers and we do one comparison here, the next comparison between the min with the current min and the max with the current max. So essentially three comparisons for every pair, right? Three comparisons per every pair, that means three over two comparison per element. And the number of elements is n, so that means the total number of comparisons is 3n over 2. Okay, so that is going to be the running time of the new algorithm, which is clearly better than the previous one. Right?